Thank you both so much for joining us. We are gonna dive right in. Mr. Holiday, I'm gonna start with you. Since generative AI tools like ChatGPT and Bard AI were unleashed in the wild last November, there has been so much buzz about their potential to help, but also their potential to harm. From your perch as Deputy Chief Technology Officer, what can this technology really generate for DOD? And how is the department working to both demystify it, but also build adequate safeguards when you don't know what's to come? Well, first of all, we're, we're never going to use chat GPT. So let's start there. Um, and so uh, it, it's very good in completing sentences, um, and it hallucinates. Um, and you know, it's a term of art you can uh, do some uh, digging on and uh, look at uh, how it, it does not have uh, common sense uh, in this uh, sense that uh, you and I you know, know about the world. And so how we're going to use it is with other generative AI modalities. So vision, signals, um, and language all combined to give us uh, decision support. And as you've heard from Mr. Sherman and, and others, um, we are going to have to have a bespoke uh, DOD cloud trained on our data. And um, those of you who are conversant with the alphabet soup uh, in a lot of our DOD um, uh, you know, processes, and uh, you can tell that you know, these large language models, you know, if, you, if you try to uh, query them on, on some of the things uh, in our ecosystem, they will give you the, the wrong answer. So it's going to have to be trained on a corpus of uh, defense-specific data. And, uh, and then it's also going to have to be trusted. And um, you know, I sat on the Defense Science Board uh, some years ago on the autonomy study. And when we briefed it to the combatant commanders, they said, you know, this is really great. But you know what? We're never going to use it unless we can trust it. And so uh, I have uh, you know, trusted AI, ML, and uh, autonomy in, in my portfolio, and uh, we are working to, uh, to climb that mountain and uh, uh, get the warfighter and combatant commanders to trust AI when it's deployed. So you're moving responsibly, but it's very emerging in your journey. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, we're, we're hosting a, uh, a AI summit in June. Um, it is already fully subscribed, um, but we, academia, industry, uh, and, and government uh, um, experts to get after, you know, just these, uh, th these questions. And, uh, you know, I can speak further on um, what some of our, our, our partners are doing. Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly get to that. And I am going to uh, use this privilege to say, please invite the press to that AI conference coming up this summer. Um, Miss Alexander, Jondria, over to you. First, I want to talk to you a little bit on this topic of generative AI barriers to adoption that you're seeing from sort of your perch as a subject matter expert. Sure, thanks very much. So we've heard about many of them. So. Uh, Mr. Holiday just mentioned the most important one, which is trust. So if we can't convince the end users to adopt because either they don't understand how that algorithm reached its conclusions or they're not comfortable with the data set that was used to train it, then it will never be deployed. And so um, I absolutely agree that, you know, we link up things like ChatGPT as a toddler giving them the car keys to the car, right? We don't want to do that right now. So it just takes time. But the good news is uh, with gathering larger data sets and specific mission data sets that we can train on and not just um, generalized data sets in defense, that's very critical to the adoption. And so that takes us to another area, which is really generating that data. So how good is that synthetic data that we're creating? Because we have to complement our sets. Some of those we won't know, we won't have gathered the right set. So gathering, looking at synthetic uh, data creation for the data sets is important. And then another big part of that, um, in addition to trust and the data sets, is bias. You know, 
how do you know that algorithm isn't the opinion of one of the creator as opposed to the decision that you want to make? So that's very hard to predict. That's very hard to know until you've actually run it, you've trained it, and you observe it. So in some cases, we're going to be deploying things and using them, but we know we want to complement that automation and those with some type of parallel activity in certain cases. In other cases, we take the risk because the mission is too high, the stakes are too high. Absolutely. And you both sort of hinted at how it's different in the capabilities for DOD and what they're used for. Um, on that point around bias, I think it's so important. Um, Mr. Holliday, I know the administration is working um, even harder on that. I think Vice President Harris had some leaders of technology companies just this week talking about sort of protecting against bias algorithm. So can you talk a little bit about like what your team's sort of role in supporting that is? And yeah, we'll start yeah, there. Yeah. So we are uh, in consultation with uh, our international partners. Um, you know, I just got back from Europe uh, last week uh, where we, uh, you know, talked with our UK and, and NATO partners around this because, you know, as you know, uh, with the internet, uh, the Europeans have a higher privacy standard than we do, we do. And so when I was online over there, I was, you know, getting asked, you know, all these permissions uh, about accessing, uh, uh, you know, privacy private information, um, and, and so they are ahead of us in frameworks uh, with respect to, um, uh, you know, bias. And so we are going to collaborate with, with them, and, um, and then we are going to uh, use, uh, you know, you saw after the vice president's, uh, you know, meeting, um, a, an announcement that I believe Scale AI is going to uh, look at, uh, uh, open AIs and, 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 and I think maybe Google's um, results um, to uh, look at, uh, you know, inherent bias and, 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 and rate it somehow. Um, uh, I'm skeptical, but, you know, I, I want to see the results. You know, I'm a, a, a data guy, you know, I'm a, I'm a show me. So uh, it, it should be an interesting, uh, you know, process, uh, you know, when that happens. Why are you skeptical? Well, um, you know, I, uh, I, I own a Tesla that <laughs> does not drive, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I do not, uh, you know, ascribe to, uh, you know, the self-driving uh, because it, it uh, you know, we have uh, capabilities to, you know, evaluate corner cases um, and we're just not there yet from a machine learning s standpoint. And, um, and then, you know, the the biases um, uh, are are inherent in, uh, in in anything that you uh, you, you train, and so we're going to have to come up with a threshold uh, that we're going to be uh, comfortable with, and um, uh, you know we're just not there yet, so it's going to take some time. Absolutely. It's good that you're being thoughtful about it. Um, really quick, back to your international trip. You said the UK and Italy. Um, what were the roots of that trip? What was accomplished and what are the next steps? Well, um, thanks to Mr. Putin and Mr. Xi, <laughs> our uh, uh, international uh, partners and allies want to uh, hold us closer and, and collaborate uh, more closely. And then specifically, uh, you know, for the NATO trip, um, motivated by, uh, you know, again, you know, most extensive land war, you know, in Europe uh, or nearby um, since World War II, and, uh, you know, the threat of, uh, uh, you know, further, you know, expansion, and then specifically around critical infrastructure in, uh, in and around the Baltics, uh, and even more specifically, the, the Nord Stream, uh, you know, pipeline uh, sabotage. And so the Europeans are recognizing that, you know, all this critical infrastructure that's on the seabed is vulnerable. And, um, and they want to institute maritime uh, ISR, uh, and we're interested in collaborating with them on underwater uh, unmanned vehicles, and also, you know, protecting those pipelines, protecting those uh, fiber optic links, uh, because it's, it, it's critical to, to European economic security. So that's why uh, we were there, and uh, 
um, we're, we're looking forward to the, uh, the collaboration. Great, so the beginning of a collaboration. And you bring us to a really important point, back to um, AI decision aids. It's not just generative AI. I mean, already right now, AI and automation is um, supporting particularly efforts around cybersecurity within DOD. I know that's um, one of your fields of expertise. Can you talk a little bit about how um, influential AI and automation has been that way? Absolutely. So, you know, within cybersecurity, we've had this journey, and it's a difference between compliance and engineering. And so from an actual delivery and making systems resilient to cyber attack, because everything's going to be attacked, everything will, get be, de will be degraded, we have to be able to operate through those attacks. So some of the newer technologies that we're looking at are where the sensors are deployed and we can collect that data for that particular enterprise, that particular location, but we can also share the data. So we share um, anonymously the indicators of compromise. And if we can bring that together and look at those, then we can find trends. So uh, some of the collective defense applications that we've seen have large groups of sensors. They have communities, which we um, call a community of interest or a dome. And then within that dome, you can see where attacks are occurring. And then if you have another dome, another enterprise, let's say it's defense, and then let's say it's the financial sector, you can look at those two sectors, you can look at the compromises that are occurring in real time, and then you can also look at the points of intersection. So that's one of the main areas, because you can respond so quickly looking for two trends. One trend is you're looking for where many different entities are being attacked, and the other is you're looking for one entity that is getting many attacks. So with analytics, you're able to go after the basic behavior as opposed to looking for signatures. And once that is shared, you can now note, hey, this is a patch, or this is something really serious, we have to address it, and all that can scale out to the entire community. So that collective defense and that data sharing is really key. Thank you for that. Um, I know we're almost out of time, but one really quick question that I wanted to ask both of you. Um, in a personal, not professional capacity, have you experimented with generative AI for image or text generation to accomplish something? And if so, what? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a geek, and so <laughs> absolutely, you know, have, have played with it, asked it to give me the difference between the Klingon Empire and Starfleet. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, so it was, uh, Are you impressed with how yes, it performed? Yes, yes, you know, it, it went through, uh, you know, the whole canon from original series to next generation to uh, Deep Space Nine, so, uh, yeah, very, very impressed. And what about you, Jandria? Yeah, absolutely, um, same thing. It's so impressive, the results you get back, it's scary. But basically, just kind of technical deep dives, random questions that you actually get data, and then also my personal favorite is how we use it in software to be able to debug, so kind of tracking that a little oh, bit. Oh, for bugs, well great. This has been such an awesome conversation. Thank you both, and thank you for being here with us. Right. Thanks very much.